Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today we have a, another mini PC to take a look at. This one is offered by GMK Tech and they offer a pretty wide variety of essentially NUC boxes or mini PCs. And they sent their G10 model for me to take a look at. Before I continue, just to be uh, completely transparent, this product was sent to me by GMK Tech. It was not personally purchased. However, I'm not receiving any financial compensation for the production of this review. And as always, my opinions on the products I feature remain my own. So depending on how you get these configured from GMK Tech, they will range anywhere from $229 to $329. Uh, there's often sales on that drop uh, that price even lower, but they come in essentially three configurations for this model. There is a no RAM, no S, there is a no RAM, no OS, no S SSD variant, which is the cheapest. Then you have the 16 gigabyte of RAM and 512 SSD, which is this model here. And then you can also get it from the factory with 16 gigs and one terabyte of storage. Interestingly enough, those aren't the maximums for any of those configurations. Let's go ahead and open the box right away and see what's inside. I will say that I'm curious to see how things are packaged because that's a lot of movement inside that box. So we've got the computer here. It appears to be a plastic shell. And let's find out what's making all the noise. I'm guessing this is the information packet which is just going to be uh, a warranty card or instructions. Yeah, so it's a user's manual. And then here's our rattly box of accessories. We have HDMI uh, cable. And then we have a USB Type-C power supply, which is 65 watts. So 65 watt USB Type-C power supply. That cable's pretty short. And then we have our VESA mount kit. If you wanted to mount this on the back of a monitor, you could absolutely do that. So nice to see the mounting bracket is included. And then we get a little warranty card. So let's clear all this down and talk about the specifications. This GMK G10 is featuring the AMD Ryzen 5 3500U processor, and it is topped out at 35 watts. That's really important to know because this is an old CPU. This was released in 2019. So this is not a spring chicken. It does feature Radeon Vega 8 graphics. Uh, so you're not really gonna be doing a whole lot of intense gaming with this. You can probably run anything that would run integrated graphics from a couple of years back, no problem. Some of the other specifications is it does utilize uh, DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM and maxes out at 64 gigs, so that would be two sticks of 32. And when we open it up, we should see two M.2 2280 PCIe slots. Each one of those slots maxes out at eight terabytes for a total of 16 total possible terabytes. Now let's move on to the I.O. On the front, we have a headphone microphone combo jack, and then we have two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports. So maximum transfer speeds on those is going to be uh, 5 gigabit per second. And then we also have our power button. On the left and right side, or pardon me, on the left side we have a vent. And then on the back we have the rest of our I.O. So down here we have a uh, Kensington lock slot. We have one USB port exclusively for power delivery. And then we have another USB type C port that uh, is 3.2 Gen 1. We have one USB 2.0 port as well. We have Display Port 1.4 and then HDMI. Now we have a sticker over top of the Ethernet port which reads, Kindly note, for faster setup, avoid connecting LAN initially. Connecting might trigger long updates delaying desktop access. In other words, this is what happens when you pull every computer out of the box is it needs to do updates and it's telling you if you connect it to the internet right away, it's going to be slow because it's going to do updates. But then you also want to do the updates. So 
I've never seen that sticker before, and I don't necessarily know if it provides a lot of value uh, to the customer. So we're going to remove that and reveal the gigabit Ethernet port. They do say that this will run three displays, and that is true. You can plug one into display port, one into HDMI, and one to USB Type-C. It does say on the website that it will run 4K at 60 hertz. It does mention up to 8K through the display port. It does not mention uh, anything about the refresh rate. So I'm not too sure how much mileage you would get plugging in an 8K monitor to a machine like this. I think that's a bit of a stretch. It is thin on ports. Uh, I do have to say that up front. Only having one USB Type-C slot and putting all of those claims out there, it really is you're gonna have to pick and choose. Or you're gonna have to do with what I've done with one of these previously, is you actually end up using dongles with these to get as much out of that USB Type-C port as possible. If you are using this as a desktop and have a lot of connectivity, you're probably going to find that three USB Type-A ports quickly get gobbled up with accessories like printers, mice, and keyboards, leaving you precious little room for USB keys. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what we find on the inside. On that note, it is worth noting that this manual does not appear to illustrate how to open the device, so that's unfortunate. Looking at the bottom, we don't have any obvious screw holes, and that is because they, I believe, are located under uh, the adhesive feet. That's too bad. I wonder if they were really so strapped that they couldn't have put those screws anywhere else. So that's one screw, two screw, three screw, four screw. Now, where can I get some purchase to separate this? Okay, that may have been unnecessary. This is just held on friction fit. I would very much still like to see what's on the inside of that. There we go. So in their defense, the feet aren't covering necessarily user serviceable components, although I would want to remove that uh, to gain access to the thermal paste if I needed to clean that. So here's your little cooler. We can see that the ports on the front appear to be using a daughter board, probably with a connector on the bottom uh, to the motherboard. We can see the two Wi-Fi antennas adhered to the side of the plastic chassis here. And we have currently uh, two sticks of eight gigabytes of 2,666 uh, sodium DDR4 memory, our SSD. And it looks like, yeah, so the other SSD fits right over top of this RAM slot. You can see the connector for it right, pardon me, right here. So that would extend over top. And it looks like they have rubber banded um, a heat sink. Let's take a closer look at that on the uh, included SSD. So I think they're trying to encourage you if you are going to uh, put in an additional SSD that you're probably going to need some sort of heat sink. Yeah, it's, those are just two rubber bands holding the thermal pad sandwiched with a piece of metal heat sink there. And then underneath we have our coin cell CMOS battery. And then we have our uh, Realtek Wi-Fi card, which is supposed to be an RL8822CE with a Bluetooth 5.0 radio. It's nice to see that that is socketed. And then this battery is held in place by some sort of adhesive that's bonded to the battery and the board. And then the connector is, is in there, but it looks like they've just dabbed adhesive on, <clears throat> on the coin cell right onto the board, which is an interesting choice. Hopefully removing that wouldn't cause any issues. And we also see that a piece of foam has been uh, placed here, uh, I guess, to stop I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what the goal of that is other than to try and create a buffer space between uh, this SSD and here. So the other things I'll mention is that the RAM is made uh, by GMK, so the same company that's making that, unless it's a rebrand. I'm going to assume that this is an air disk because that's what the sticker 
uh, says on top of it. It's not the worst designed machine that I have ever seen. It's not the best designed machine I've ever seen. Like I wouldn't expect that either, given the price point. There are a couple things that they're obviously doing out of necessity. So let's uh, put all this back together and see what it's like to use. Okay, with everything plugged in, let's power this up. There's our boot logo. I will appreciate that it looks like they have flashed the offline uh, version or some sort of custom thing because it's not asking me to sign in, which I appreciate. So it looks like this shipped with uh, Windows 11 Pro 24H2 installed on 2005, May the 27th. OS build 26100.3476. Out of that 16 gigs of RAM that we have installed, 12.9 uh, of it is usable, which means that the Radeon Vega mobile graphics is handling the rest. Now that we've gotten this thing to get through its initial installation, let's do a quick boot test just to see what sort of speeds we're getting from that CPU. RAM uh, configuration and whether or not it's acceptable. Yep, I would refer to that as acceptable. So after running uh, 3D Mark on Night Raid version 1.1, 1 .1, uh, the best we were able to do is about 12 to 15 FPS, so definitely not gaming <laughs> quality on modern titles. The CPU pretty much maintained its uh, temperature around 60 degrees Celsius. It also did at some points um, clock up to around uh, 32 or 3.2 gigahertz, but very often was hanging around the flat line of 1.3 or 1.4. This is going to be best left to tasks that are quite simple and not ones that are very demanding. So overall, ladies and gentlemen, I would say that there is nothing remarkable about the G10. It is 100% a functional computer at the price point that it's issued at. Although, like I stated earlier, the lack of ports on this one, and it's not necessarily due to its size, will mean that its uses are fairly limited. The maximum transfer speeds of five gigabit per second on your USB ports, again, will be a factor. And ultimately, there are a lot of devices, both brand new and used, that are going to be very competitive in the price point as the G10. So while it is not a bad option, there are probably many other options that one would consider uh, to be competitive against it. The one thing that I will say is just because the G10 may not be an overwhelmingly competitive product does not necessarily mean that the rest of GMK Tech's offerings may not be able to meet your needs. So I would encourage you to check any links in the description down below, not only for this device, but anything else in GMK Tech's lineup. The experience of things coming out of the box, there wasn't any quality control issues. Things looked okay on the inside. There were a few design choices that I was a little curious about, but we went over those during the disassembly. Overall though, I suspect that this will be a perfectly serviceable PC for somebody that needs a desktop experience but doesn't really want to spend uh, a significant amount of money on it and where creating a docking setup for your laptop may not be desirable. At any rate, if you have any questions about the G10, make sure you're leaving them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.